The gorgeous Leslie Ann Brandt is joining me in studio. Welcome back to Cape Town. Thank you. Well, it's so lovely to have you here. Um, you were born and raised in Cape Town. Born and raised in Athlone, Greenhaven, yeah. And then you went off and ventured the world. So why don't we, um, we're going to talk about why you're here in Cape Town in just a moment, but why don't you tell me what you're up to now? I'm uh, <laughs> here yeah. uh, to execute and produce a documentary yeah. called Tea with Madiba, but also just to see my friends and family and um, you know, I haven't been back for seven years, so it's nice to reconnect with, you know, all of my my family, my friends, the culture, the music, the city, and so much has changed. I mean, Cape Town is, you know, it's still the magical place, beautiful city, I remember. Home home is always home. Home is always home. But, I, you know, I left at a, at a you know, um, at a young age after school, after high school, so it was pretty, like, traumatic to kind of you know, leave your friends, everything yeah. you knew, your family and go to, I went to, I moved to New Zealand mm -hmm. with my, my, my parents and my brother um, and, uh, you know, which is a completely different culture altogether and that's sort of, you know, where I guess the acting started. Yeah. I want to talk about culture shock. Did you get a culture shock? Massive culture shock. Especially, I think, you know, because people didn't understand my accent. You yeah. know, it was very thick. If you can hear me now, I sound a little bit more of a hybrid between uh, South African and, and New Zealand. But it was, it was really frustrating for me, you know. And also, the misconceptions that people had about South Africa yeah. and about, you know, Cape Town and... I found myself sort of setting people straight like a lot, which is probably <laughs> where, where you know, um, I built a lot of patriotism once I left the country. I find you always build patriotism once you leave the place. I think, yeah, because you're here day to day, you're kind yeah. of stuck in the bubble, you know, but when you leave and you sort of, and people have these ideas of like what South Africa is about or the people, or the mm -hmm. cultures, or, I mean, and, and, and it's probably where my passion sort of came for um, wanting to positively promote the colored community of borders because people didn't actually even know that we existed, which was yeah. so strange to me. It's like, how can you have such a, um, such a, f like a, you know, huge uh, amount of knowledge on apartheid and, and, and know about our civil rights movement, but not know about the minority groups who were involved? Well, the word colored even isn't a word no. that's used overseas. No. And when you say colored, they think you mean black. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I've sort of, I've found that in the States. I live in Los Angeles now where, you know, people have sort of taken offense to it or, mm -hmm. but, but, but my approach is to, to educate and it's mm -hmm. sort of to go, I understand in your culture that this is what that means, but you know, where I'm from, this is what it, you know, it's five to six million people in a, yeah. in a, in a, country and yes it was you know imposed on us by a, an oppressive government but it sort of at the same time today represents a culture and one I'm very proud of. Okay well you're here um, for Tea with Madiba, you're yes. promoting Tea with Madiba, it's a documentary, what is it about? So Tea with Madiba is a uh, 20 year post apartheid conversation and I serve as the, the narrator of the documentary and also one of the executive producers, along with the director, Kirsten Dunbar Chase. Um, and she did another film called I'm Not Black, I'm Colored, and sort of, and it's won, it won sort of a bunch of awards and festivals. Um, it's in several, you know, universities as part of their curriculum in the States, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I went and uh, opened uh, the film at the Minneapolis Porn, uh, Film Festival with her. Um, so she's, she loves the community, she loves Cape Town, she loves South Africa, she's very passionate about this country. And what we wanted to do is to, um, you know, she's been working on this since May of last year. Yeah. Um, so she, so what the, the aim of the film is to come back and sort of give people in the colored community, but also, you know, we want to represent South Africa as a whole, an opportunity to voice um, how they feel they sort of fit in in the new South Africa. And we have looked at people from all walks of life, you know, TV presenters, radio personalities, politicians, community leaders. Um, we went into a squatter camp uh, mm -hmm. called Freedom Farm in Elsie's River, and it's predominantly colored, but also has um, black South Africans there um, living together. And, you know, it was a real eye-opener for me because when you are away from it for so long, and you come back and you know you fly in to Cape Town and you see the shacks yeah. and it's just something I'm not used to seeing every day day to day. I've been out of the country for a long time now and it was so strange to me that, um, well not strange but just frustrating, sad, 
um, that, you know, 20 years on after we gain our democratic freedom, there are still people who are living and waiting, you know, living like that and waiting for homes. Yeah. Um, and they're a beautiful community. I mean, I, we, we went there as, with part of the New Jeremiah Hope Project, which is this amazing couple, an elderly couple, who every Friday make a giant pot of food and go and feed like 150 people. Wow. And they don't have, you know, tons of funds themselves. Yeah. They rely on donations from people in their community, people abroad. Um, and so I got one-on-one -on -one interaction with, you know, just people who were, and so we interview them. And we, we get it straight from like, you know, the community and the people. That sounds like a great experience. Um, you mentioned that you've been out of the country for a while, seven years. Do you find it's hard to, to stay connected with, um, with this issue specifically because it's so country specific? Um, Not for me because I have people, I have friends who, and family who live here, yeah. you know, huge family. I have people who live in the Cape Flats, friends, you know, and family. You know, I have family in Tafelsa, rough area, Mitchell's Plain, Athlone, you know, my family still live, one of my uncles still lives on the same street I grew up in. So, I, and I'm in communication with them, you know, a lot, and I pay attention to what's going on in the country, you know, news-wise. and. Um, so it's, it, it isn't difficult for me, but I understand, you know, it's funny. I had this really interesting conversation with a taxi driver. Well, it sounds like you're doing an amazing thing with the documentary. How can people watch it? Um, well, we are still filming at the moment. Mm -hmm. So Kirsten's traveling around the country. Um, and we are, you can go to www.teawithmadiba.com. Mm -hmm. There's actually an eight minute video that we put together from footage we shot last year. And you can see sort of the premise of the, of the documentary and what it's about. Um, we will, we're aiming to have the film done by December, you know, by the anniversary of Tata Madiba's passing. So we would like to um, have it go into film festivals in the next year. And then Great. obviously I'd love to have it premiere in South Africa, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. Amazing. Well, good luck um, with the future filming of it. Thank and hopefully you. we see it next year. 